The day it first published, I went across to our regular news agent and there was no poster outside. The poster had gone. I went inside. There were no wheels on display and there was very few magazines then. So I said, what have you done with wheels? And he said, they've all walked out the door. I said, where are they? He said, well, they went in 10 minutes. That was the culmination of such an effort because we had no facilities, we had no money, and we had no experienced people working for the place except myself. I started in February 1971, simply not understanding how big the job was or the influence and, and power, if you like, of, of wheels. One of the things that I was most proud of was we set out to beat Modern Motor. It took two years, but we did it, and wheels has never been behind since. Over the years, we've kept our readers front of mind. Many of them have stuck with us on the journey. I think they know that Wills always tries hard to get it right, and there's a lot of credibility behind what Wills says and does. One of the main reasons that Wills is held in high esteem is uh, because they tell the truth. I think the reports are concise and accurate, and readers appreciate that. It was tough, but it was fair. You know, we wanted every car to be great, and we were disappointed when it wasn't. Wheels was one of the first magazines to really um, structure a road test process, which culminated with comparisons. The pinnacle of that, of course, is Wheels Car of the Year. And all we do is live and breathe cars for a week with the goal of coming out with a single winner. Frankly, I don't think anyone gets near Wheels when it comes to the quality of our testing. The enthusiasm for the drive itself really comes through. It's about just enjoying everything that a car has to offer. I managed to be one of the very first journalists to drive a new V12 Lamborghini, which unfortunately I had a minor accident in. But it didn't prevent the editor, Phil Scott, from writing what I thought was a wonderful cover line. We drive Diablo and crash. Robinson Benz, world's fastest and most expensive car. Read it and weep. It's probably the most famous cover of Wheels ever. And it was this sort of thing that made Wheels different to virtually every other car magazine in the world. By and large, Wheels enjoys a fantastic relationship with the car industry. And over the years, we've been able to pull off some, some major coups. We got Holden to build us a one-of-a-kind VT Commodore SS to drive from Los Angeles to New York via Detroit. I was at the Christmas lunch at Holden with Chief Engineer Tony Hyde, and I suggested we'd like to drive a car across America, but I said it had to be left-hand drive, otherwise the Americans wouldn't take it seriously. And before I knew it, Holden was actively building this car, fabricating special parts, and Bob Hall drove it across country. And to this day, I'm still amazed that we managed to persuade a car company to build a one-of-a-kind car just so we could do a magazine story. There was one Prime Minister of Australia whom we persuaded to road test a car. We'd asked if he would road test it, it was a Ford LTD, and the answer was, tell them if I can drive it, I'll do it. And so Malcolm Fraser drove an LTD around Canberra for 22 minutes. Cars have been in my blood since the beginning, I suppose. I read wheels quite often. It was informative, useful. It certainly in my life filled a very useful role in keeping me up to date with what was happening in the automotive world. I enjoyed it. In the motor racing world, where I've spent the last 40 odd years, if you cracked a story in Wheels magazine, you really had made it because it was the pinnacle. You know, it's a, it's a special thing. It's getting your, your painting hung in a gallery. Having a V on the cover was very important. Not only was it car of the year, but it was a 100% Australian designed, architected and produced car. One of the reasons Wheels has been so successful in Australia is because of Australia's special relationship with the automobile. It's tied to our coming of age. You know, you get a car and all of a sudden the wide open spaces, the landscape in front of you just broadens massively. It's, it's freedom for Australians. Wheels was a magazine that was Australian, had a distinctly Australian point of view, but it had an outward looking global view of the automotive world. The Wheels magazine's always been the premier Australian car magazine. The one that always had the better international stories, um, what seemed to be a, a, a better international connection. One of the things that Wheels has been is a breeding ground for one of the great unknown Australian exports, and that is motoring journalists. I started my career at another magazine, 
But the goal was always to get to Wheels because Wheels had the best writing, it had the best photography, it had the most incisive commentary and, and its view of the world was like, like nothing else. Wheels magazine means an enormous amount to me and I felt like I'd been entrusted with something that was very precious and very meaningful. When I grew up, I was a religious purchaser of Wheels, and I still am. I wouldn't feel right if I didn't read Wheels magazine once a month. It's part of my life. It's, it's the oracle of the car industry in this country. It's been a bit of a trip, really, and Wheels has been part of that trip. I love the magazine. I, I love the magazine. What did Wheels mean to me personally, in my heart? The fulfillment of a dream. When I slid into the editor's chair for the first time, I could feel the spectres of the Robbos and the Tuckies and Athel Yeoman standing there behind me, looming over the new bloke, making sure he does a good job. But I also got this really strong sense that they were there to support me as well, and that they were as excited about the Wheels' future as I was. The people over the years that have been responsible for Wheels have given us something special, and it's always being reinvented. It's always new and exciting and interesting. I see the magazine just getting better and better. I keep coming back to the fact that it tells stories and people want to read stories. The question mark that hung over magazines, whether they would still be relevant, and I think the, you know, the proof's in the pudding. What we are challenged with now is taking that strong magazine and really letting it grow its wings in the digital frontier. Wheels is going to go from Australia's best magazine into Australia's best automotive media brand. So there we are, this is Wheels today. We've certainly come a long way, haven't we? I would, absolutely, from the first issue. I'll you take that. Thank you, sir. And I'll take this and hopefully not drop it. <laughs> I'm feeling the same way. Absolutely fantastic stuff. 61 years from this from that. to this. It's changing what, so quickly. What will it be like? In 10 years' time. <laughs>